Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's the middle of winter and gardening for a lot of people is not something that's on their mind. But for me, this is a great time to actually start gardening. And I'm going to explain why it's a brilliant time to start your garden this t at this time of year. So right now, when there's not much growing and there's not much life in the garden, this is the time when I do a lot of my planning and a lot of my preparation for next year. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually lay the foundations for what we're going to grow next year and how we're going to grow it. So normally what I do is I set my wood chip potato bed up in early spring, late winter, early spring, just as I'm getting ready to plant. But I do it so late mainly so I can show you guys how I set my bed up and how to plant them. So what I'm going to do this year is because I've done loads of videos on how I grow my potatoes and how I grow them in wood chips, I'm going to set my bed up early. And whenever I've got a few minutes, Anytime I get some, a barrel load of wood chips, I'm just going to lay them on my bed where I'm going to grow potatoes next year. And that way, it's not an overburden work. It's not, a, it's not a lot of work to do in one go. And I can get my potato bed set up without, without any stress. This is one of the things that I'd like to do uh, is more this year is do little jobs and do little and often. You hear that phrase little and often a lot of the time. So this is one of the things that I'm gonna aim for this year is if I get a wheelbarrow load of compost or wood chips that I just need to dump, then that's what's going on here. And that way it's not an overburden on my body either. Things like this, I mean, I'm at the moment I'm raking up leaves from pathways. So that's a brick pathway over here. And there's no point in these leaves staying here. If they were on, on grass or something, then there's an argument there to leave them to rot into the ground but here they'll break down but they'll end up in a place where where they're no use to me so i'm raking all these up and these are all going in to make my leaf mold so i'm just collecting them in this container and they'll all go in to make my leaf mold it's a great time as well to start planning on things that are going to set you up for next year and i'll show you what i mean this is actually one of the jobs that's been on my list to do all year but because i've just been so busy i've not got around to do it my compost bins are absolutely falling apart. These pallets are nearly 10, 10 years oldish, and they're rotting, they're breaking apart, they're, they're breaking down quite nicely, and they're turning into compost themselves. I used to actually have a lot of rhubarb here, but because I didn't re eat rhubarb, I composted it out, and I fancy getting rhubarb back into the ground now. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move these um, composting bays I'm going to move them over to this corner and this corner is something that I've been meaning to tackle for a very long time but it's something there's so much rubbish over here and it's just something that's been a little bit intimidating and I've been a little bit scared to get in there and, and uh, have a go at it but what I'm thinking is I want to build a compost bay I've got my old fence panels and I think they could be used uh, for some of this uh, they can give me a little bit of protection and what I'm thinking is I want to build a, a roofed composting bay here, so maybe a two pallet system. I don't need three pallets, two pallets is enough for what I'm doing uh, because I use so many other forms of composting. So um, I'm thinking build a compost pile here or maybe push it even back into that corner and then we'll get a bit of protection from this tree as well, from these bushes behind us, from the wind. Because everything's slowed down right now, you can actually take a step back and think about things that need doing and what worked and what didn't work. I mean, we get a lot of wind coming up from this side because of this massive tree and that massive tree there. We get loads of winds just funneling through. I mean, this is one of the reasons that I've left my fruit trees to grow tall. Yes, it's going to be difficult to get apples and pears from the very top of the tree, but it's going to give me lots of wind protection. And that's what I'm planting for. I mean, these buddleias as well, I've let, let them grow tall so it can just give me a little bit of wind protection. So that's what, one of the things that I'm trying to grow here. Other things that we start thinking about now is what we want to grow and where we want to grow it. So I've had a little bit of a problem here. I mean, this bean frame did absolutely brilliant, but it's come down in the winds that we've had, um, partly because the side of my bed's fallen down. So I need to get this put back up and fix, you know, fix that, fix that bed. But I'm in two minds. I might get rid of these raised beds completely. Um, I might, I might just get rid of them and raise the whole of the ground up. But I'm a real fan of grass paths and I'll do a separate video on why I'm a fan of grass paths. Um, my garlic is growing really nicely at the moment. Let's just put them back up. They've come up really nicely using my cardboard method. But if you have a look over here, I mean, one of the things that I've done is that 
if you look at the, if you see the rubbish, one of the reasons is because I'm a fan of composting in situ. So some of that gets uh, just laid, some of the peelings get laid on the ground and they are allowed to break down in situ. But if you have a look here, what I've done is I planted garlic in random places. So I'll show you all over the garden is I've got my dedicated garlic beds and then I've got garlic just dotted about all over the garden. So there's garlic scattered everywhere. And what I'm going to do is that's going to work in a way to protect my plants for when I grow next year. So here in between this garlic is where I'm going to grow a lot of leafy type plants. And the reason that I'm going to grow them and in between the garlic is because the garlic will act as a mask for and a protection for those leafy plants that are susceptible to insect damage. And also the path that we're walking on, I'm very tempted to get rid of this path. I'm in two minds about this one. I mean, we did it up there. Last year, we had a, a similar path up there and we got rid of that. All down this section here, this used to be a grass path, but I've got rid of that. We put down the, we, we lifted up the edging of the beds and just using them as wooden walkways. And all this path has just given me an extra couple of feet, three feet maybe of growing space. And it's the same thing that I can achieve over there, but I'm in two minds about that path because that path is really useful. I don't, it just adds on a little bit more of a journey if we go around the other side. I mean, because they are raised, getting the wheelbarrow over it can be a little bit tricky, especially when you've got plants growing all over the way. So, so that's one of the things I'm gonna think about. But, but this path here is one that I'm definitely getting rid of. And that's why I've allowed, um, I've allowed leaves and stuff to just accumulate in the ground. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start stacking Anytime I get some cardboard, I'm just gonna start stacking layers of cardboard here. I mean, the ground under here is really heavy clay and it's really stony and it's been compacted by us walking on it. So I'm not gonna even try and dig that. It's too much hard work to try and dig that. So I'm just gonna sheet mulch everything out of here and I'll turn this into wonderful growing medium for next year. And now's the time to do it because you're working in a time when you haven't got a million other things to do it's a great time to actually have a go at this sort of thing. So that's my job for this. And I'm gonna do it in a really passive way. So anytime we get some boxes and stuff, that's just gonna go on. And I'm just gonna mulch out these weeds. And because it's quite high and quite raised up, I'm gonna mulch it out. And then when I lay my wood chips for my potato bed, I'm just gonna cover the rest of it with potato bed, you know, wood chips. And I'll put this side of the bed, this edge in here, I'll put that as a, as a path in the middle of it. So that'll be a quick way of improving soil really easy. And it'll be really passive as well. So I'm not gonna even try and be accurate with it. I'm not gonna even try and be, you know, uh, try and make it look perfect either. But I've got my chicken house to clean later on today. So when I do that, all the raw manure and all the chicken bedding is going straight onto here. And that's gonna work like rocket fuel to improve this soil. So let's just get more, more of this material down and we'll slowly improve that. Yeah, we'll just fill it up and stack it and fill it. Again, this side of the bed has been a really useful addition. This side of the garden has been absolutely fantastic addition to the to us growing and i'm just going to keep i've left all the plants just to die in place i'm going to empty my bins and stuff onto the or empty my compost pot i'm going to empty my pots and stuff because quite a few of my chili plants have died so these are just getting pulled out all that soil is going to go straight on into the into and the plants are going to go on there as well and they can all compost down here. So they can all just compost down in place. And we're just gonna keep building this soil. What I might do is, I'm, again, like you saw me with the cardboard, I might stick a layer of cardboard over the top of this because there are some dandelions creeping through. So I might just do that and then bury it again like this. It might look a little bit untidy, but we're creating really good soil in a really passive way and we're allowing you know, critters and bugs to make habitats here. And there's gonna be loads of insects and stuff overwintering here. If you have a look at this pile of leaves behind me, I've just done another rake of the, we've just done another rake of the lawn and picked up all these straggly leaves. But this is gonna, again, go on to make really useful leaf mold. So we're still picking loads of hot peppers. I mean, 
there's loads of yellow habaneros, chocolate habaneros that we've just picked, and that you know, you know, they're you being used for pickling and well, the stuff that we've got for sale. But this is what I was talking about a while ago. Is you know when plants start to die back, and these sorts of plant, uh, and they get to this stage where they're completely died back. That's when I'm going to come and just snip bits off. So I never, when I'm overwintering in the greenhouse, I'm not snipping loads off in one go. So this stuff that's falling off, that's the stuff that's dying. That's going to get snipped off. We've got our greenhouse heater. I mean, I've been meaning to do a few updates on this. It's doing its job. I mean, it's doing its job. I've been meaning to do a specific update on this video on how, because I made the candles a while ago and, I, and I've done a video on how I made the candle. Oh, that one's gone out, so that one needs filling and putting back on again for tonight. At the moment, it's nine degrees in here, similar to outside. But last night it was minus two outside and it was 2.7 degrees as a minimum temperature in here. So when we've got two, three, maybe even four, when it, on a really cold day of these candles going, and they're, and they're doing a really good job heating this place. So, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with the way they're performing, actually. So we're going to get these chilies inside, and we're going to get pickling these. We've got these broad beans as well that have grown up really nice. These need to get planted outside. And some of these onions need to get planted outside as well. I'm being really careful on the water at the moment because I don't want the soil to freeze. So it is quite cold, remember that. It's still quite cold at the moment. You know, plants like this, I've just left them where they are. Some of them are going to come down. I think it's time for this to come down and we'll just pack it up and chuck it in the chicken house and they can compost it into the ground and make some nice compost. But there's loads of jobs still to do and there's loads of things to plan for next year. I've been getting my seeds out and deciding on what I'm going to plant, what works well this year and what didn't work so well. I mean, broad beans have turned into a massive hit for us. They were grown for us just as uh, cover crops in the past, but over the last couple of years, they've turned into a massive hit for us and we're really liking them. So those broad beans are ready to go in the ground soon and that, that'll give us an early crop. With something like broad beans, you can crop them all the way through the year. So yeah, I grew them as a cover crop. I've decided I like them and we're just going to keep growing loads and loads. So that's a real, so that's a real win for me. Look, there's a massive globe, globe artichoke plant here as well. It's a really pretty plant, but really unproductive. I mean, it gives you the globe artichokes, but there's so little on that artichoke to eat. I'm, I mean, I like the look of it, but I'm in two minds of whether to keep it or not. I mean, another thing that we had was we, had, we grew a couple of types of potol or achocha, the smooth skin one, absolutely beautiful in a bhaji, but the prickly one, absolutely minging. I might even get round to, if I get the time, I mean, our pickle, pickling business has just taken off and it's just absolutely phenomenal, the response we've had. And it's really, it's taken up so much of my time. But that's why I'm so grateful to be out in the garden, you know, to be outside today. I might even get around to building my man cave here. I mean, we've got a concrete foundation I've been playing with ideas of using rammed earth uh, to build it, but then I'm thinking, you know, yes, it's going to be more economical, it's going to be more environmentally friendly, but it's going to be so much more labour intensive. Concrete blocks might be the quicker and the more uh, easier way to go in terms of what it's going to demand from me physically. This thing still needs to come down and it'll come down, it'll, it'll happen, I mean, it'll happen. At the moment, it's a great time to do a lot of planning. One day I might even extend my pond. And uh, yeah, that's another thing that I wanna do. Maybe in eat up all of this side of the garden, or if I could if I could really do it, I'd eat, eat up this whole area and put a bridge going across and then we could have a swimming pond. And that'd be brilliant. Uh, but there's so much to do. There's always stuff to do. Do you know, don't, just don't limit yourself to gardening in the summer and don't limit yourself to getting outside in the summer when it's nice. I mean, once you get moving, the cold quickly passes. Do you know, I came out this morning and I felt a little bit cold and a little bit shivery and I didn't really want to be outside because I haven't been outside for a couple of weeks because it's been raining and it's been horrible. But today uh, we've got no rain and as soon as I'm outside and I started doing a little bit of work, I'm, my body's warmed up and I'm pumped up and I'm ready to go. So don't limit yourself to just gardening when it's warm. 
get yourself outside because the fresh air and just being outside it just does so much good for your body and so much good for your soul as well so that's a little summary of why i like to start gardening or why i think it's a great time to start gardening in the winter so i'm gonna leave it there for this one assalamu alaikum warahmatullah